been uh, given the honor of coming up here today and uh, helping Paul tell the story of EAA. Now, those of you who know Paul wouldn't think he'd be having much trouble with that. But Paul's really good at talking about you. He's not so good about talking about himself. And that's going to be my role tonight, to help to bring out those stories about, about Paul and, and the last 60 years of, of EAA. So Paul, I'd like to ask you a first question. What, what would be your, your favorite memories of all these, these uh, conventions, as you call them, over 60 years of time? Uh, the people. That's the most important thing.
to make aviation better. And I'm proud of all those that in government helped this wonderful organization. I know, Paul, that uh, you had the honor of having dinner tonight with somebody who was uh, very important uh, for this organization. Uh, maybe you could tell a little bit about his story. Well, that's, they're here with us tonight. Ray Shorter, his wife Bernice, Audrey used to run off of him and have a copy of our magazine. And I found Ray and his wife. They owned a printing company that had been started many, many years ago by their dad and grandparents. And for many, many years, they printed it for nothing. There's so many wonderful people that give them their lives and time to make this organization what it has become. And I'm very proud of them and to be a part of all of this. I, I know you've often talked about uh, not just the, the chapters being churches, but you talk about the church of hand and mind. What is it that you mean by that? We have a church, you people, fine people, that's built by a lot of people. And then put the hand and mind to work. It's not only really build, building airplanes, but helping our society. We have almost a thousand churches or chapters throughout the country. Keeping forth this high standard that we all have. It's well respected, not only in our own country, but the chapters in countries all over the world that have ch chapters. And I think we all are blessed to do it in an environment looking at that floor clean and spotless like this organization is. In my military career, uh, which is much different than a normal one, and I always wanted everything just right with those that worked with me and maintained high standards on the airplanes and love for all the people that worked with me and that flew with me. If I didn't earn a living as a commander in the military, I would not have had the time to spend with EA to be able to travel on a truck a jet or a transport to go to chapters. I was never criticized because the commanders above me knew it was not for me was for you. I know Paul, uh, I like to go down to Paul's office. He's got an office that's uh, it's kind of in that complex behind the red barn down near Camp Shoulder. And on his desk he has stacks of pictures, you know, black and white pictures from the early days of aviation. And I guess what I'm always intrigued about is I see some of these photos of chapter meetings from the early days. And everybody's wearing suits and ties back then. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's much more informal today in the in dress, but I, I think that the people are, are still the same, don't you? Yeah, yes, they are. <clears throat> I met so many wonderful people. Audrey and I had the privilege of being very close to Mrs. Linder when we had our the Spirit of St. Louis flight. And uh, we had a lot of letters from wonderful people whether they're movie actors or what. And sometimes people say, oh, I'd like to buy one. Not from us. They belong to the people. And uh, Audrey and I went to a 
Broadcasters Hall of Fame some years back. We were invited, and after the function, we happened to meet in the elevator with the gentleman and his wife who was, be, was being honored. And he said to his wife, these people are million millionaires, which we are. I learned that from him. Ms. Paul Harvey told his wife, we were millionaires, we have a million friends. You can't beat that. You know, uh, one of the people uh, who I work with, uh, Trevor J. Anzi, recently had somebody send him super, super great videos of one of the very early fly-ins. And uh, he put it on a DVD and went down to, uh, to show it to Paul. And they started playing it. He wanted to know which fly-in it was. And uh, he started playing it. And then Paul watched it for a while. And then he says, stop, stop, stop. You know, he says, and Trevor says, what's wrong? And he says, we need popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> but then he went on to comment, and he says, you know, looking at this, this DVD of what I think you decided was finally the 54 fly-in. He said, look, 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 at what, look at what EAA is about. Look at all those, those families, even back then. And, and, and it's still about that today. It's, it's, it's about families, isn't it, Paul? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm sure in this audience, when we held our event in Rockford, Illinois, you know, as kids from different families this big, in our clean, park-like environment, our here today is husband and wife, grandma and grandpa, and great grandmas and grandpa today. That's how close we are. And I know that there's one very, very special volunteer that uh, you've had over the years who's, who's helped you in every one of those 60 years with this, uh, with, with the EAA. And I, I know that you would like to honor that person this evening. Audrey, stand, stand up. Yeah. 